Good afternoon, my name is Scott Rudd, the Chief Strategic Officer of T3Live.com. Welcome to today's recap and look ahead. We had the first day of March and it was a strong one. You know, after yesterday's action, a lot of people didn't know what to do. You had these imbalances, huge to the sell side. You had um, the MCSI rebalance. You had a lot of things going on that made the market look a little weak and maybe a little vulnerable. So if you went out flat, not a bad idea. If you went out short, you had to risk the fact that new monthly flows come in. I talk about that all this time. First few days typically tend to be strong. You know, and you, know, you had um, a lot of things to think about. So anyway, um, depending on how you came in, I talked about how we gapped above the 50-day moving average again. Can we hold it? And if we hold it, you know, would there be power to take out Friday's high? And if you came in flat, how do you get long? What do you look for? And if you came in short, you're going to have to cover and, and use some adjustment areas in order to you know, salvage the trade versus just rolling it up. You know, a lot of people have been rolling up shorts since that double bottom in 1812, and you know, chances are they're, they're getting a little wet underneath the arms. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, look at the chart. We go to the SPX and you'll see um, here it is, front and center. You know, there was actually one day that I, I showed on the VTF that kind of helped a lot of people, helped me too. You know, first of all, here was your double bottom. Here's your, your, your bottom there. Uh, your, your next bottom in 1812, your three-day move, remember that? And then what do we do? We came into resistance and couldn't really get through the first time there. Pulled back, got your red dog reversal. What did we do? We held the 21-day. We held that Friday pivot, came up, made a Friday high, came back in, lost the 50-day, held the 8-day, and extended. Wow. So lots of different spots to potentially make some adjustments. Now, if you look at this two-day pull-in into the 8-day moving average, okay, a lot of guys... Maybe got short. What I try and do is I try and show you past patterns that could maybe help you out. Because if you remember last year, we had a similar pattern. You had your bottom, you had your double bottom. This was the prior resistance. Pushed through, you had a two-day pullback into the eight-day moving average. Everyone thought this was a breakout failure, just like this one. Okay? It was not. Pulled in, gapped up, you had your wide-range bar through prior resistance. Okay, then it made another little move, which maybe tomorrow is another little move. Went sideways. Right here, probably everyone said, I'm out of it, I'm out of it. First down day again, it's going to fail. Engulfed, engulfed, and went, you know, probably 100 handles above where if you would have missed the first part of this move, at least if you followed my 8-day and 21-day moving average rule, you participated, let alone just fighting it. So let's flash forward to, again, where we are now. At this point... You know, you had your double bottom, you had your push up into resistance, you had your calculated red dog reversal pullback, you know, got a little extended, held the eight, they pushed to highs. There you go. It's that easy, which it never is. So anyway, potential is, you know, what's next? Where are all the overthrows? And if you look here, you know, it, it, it all starts soon. So, you know, this will be this crazy, crazy area of resistance. You have, um, you know, this 1990 spot that goes all the way to about 2025. So, you know, this to me though also is like just a day one. Okay, so I know we're overbought, we've come a long way, but you have a day one engulfing two bars. So you just can't blindly be short yet because if you can't handle a move to here, chances are, you know, you might get pushed out of the way. And I still think some things had day ones and look decent on the long side because I might think to myself, what if? What if the bios, the bios that have been the weakest, that have gotten absolutely annihilated, which they have, and just say you got out of it when it broke this trend here, or broke this trend there, or broke this trend here. What if the bios want to break this little downside consolidation to the upside? That probably would help you know, the tape go a little bit further. I know it's a laggard. We tried the same trade here, and it failed. So we'll see what happens here. It did poke its head. Some guys are in the, the IBBs for a trade. Another potential situation, what if the XLE that's not extended, that's not five days up, decides to break out a little bit with, I know there's a 430 number, so that's hard to be in, but just saying if you're just blindly shorting, what happens if the XLE that has been in a broken trend, that we've talked about this all the time, look where it came from, this is where it broke the 200 day, this is where it broke massive uh, support and then came back and failed, what if the XLE comes and breaks above this lower consolidation, which it can, because it's nice and tight, right into here. So it's going to need, you know, some good, you know, good number 430, but whatever. This also could drive us higher, not really overbought. Yes, it's had to move off the lows, but look how tight it is. So some of these charts are tight and could still expand. 
Then some of the banks. The banks have been battered and bruised. JP Morgan didn't even break above 59 yet. JP Morgan was at 59 the last time we were here. So what happens if something like JP Morgan, you know, that had a big engulfing day today and gave you a nice strong move in my morning note, I said if it gets above 5720, it could continue. But all it is is right up to this consolidation. Maybe JP Morgan has a little bit more in the tank. This is one big day up. So maybe that has more. Even little Goldman Sachs, that's been horrendous, you know, uh, to the downside. Okay, look where the 50 day is. You know, this broke this, this minor uh, consolidation above the 21 day. It can get to here. So there's some spots that these things can get to, okay, where even look how high that stuff is. So, you know, there is definitely some things that can continue that could continue the S&P if that's all you want to do is short that versus technically, you know, dice it up. Um, well, the, the, the big thing that happened today, in my opinion, was I was trying to be short the spiders in the first 30 minutes, but in the first 30 minutes, you know what didn't happen? Facebook didn't come in, Google didn't come in, Amazon didn't come in, Apple was strong. I'm like, all right, let me flip. I flipped long the spiders. That's why it's good to be on the virtual trade floor. You see what I'm doing. Got in Facebook, got in um, Google, got in Apple, and got in the spiders. So I had four longs and said, I think we can go now. Remember that song? I think we can go now. No, I think that's, I think we're alone now. But anyway, shouldn't be singing Luca on the recap. But um, <laughs> you, you look here, and uh, there are the spiders. So a lot of people said, you know, you didn't have the time to make your little switch, you know, above here or above there. Go to the five-minute chart. You'll see that they tried to press this gap up, okay, right here, okay. This was, um, this was your close on the lows. Here was your gap up, sideways, sideways, sideways. Didn't fill it. I think this is when I covered my short, and this, I believe, is when I got long, okay, the spiders, and I'm still long some spiders. And then this is when it cleared that spot. So couldn't fill the gap as much as they pressed it, held the 50-day again. You know, could have been buy number one, buy number two, or maybe buy number one, buy number two, and then you held it again and then continued. So, you know, a little bit of time there. A lot, of, a lot of things look like that. Look, you want to look at Google. Google gapped up and also gave you um, a small little spot before taking off. And I guess it's easier to show in the daily chart. You know, Google finally you know, broke above this minor consolidation. And this is only day one. This has been in this for a little while. So maybe this tries to go a little bit more. That's why it's not like it's up like one, two, three, four, five days before a reversal. This has just poked its head. So it could go a little bit more if it wants. Um, Amazon, also, we talked about it at this level in my note. Look at that awesome trade. You know, if you were short overnight, you better have used that, you know, 564 to 562 spot to cover. If you were flat it, you had a nice clean trade here above this spot into the, the moving average of 578. Nice little stair step higher, sideways consolidation, and go. Facebook, um, you know, let's see if I can write it in real quick. Also, you know, isn't really a, a great looking pattern, but for those of you who are trying to short a breakdown of this ascending channel, it hasn't happened yet. And now it has a higher high, and if we're up, it should be up a little bit tomorrow. Netflix um, also, you know, had a little potency today. Looks like it took back the 200 day, and seems as if maybe it wants to stretch a little bit above 100. Um, I also, you know, by flipping gears, I was in gold, and gold still looks fine. I held in better than I would have thought it was, but with the market rallying like this, it wasn't the place to be after a big move that it had. But if you look overall at the, the, the chart of gold, which I probably should have still had some, it, it still held, okay, this eight-day moving average. Sometimes these things come to the 21-day and are still fine. But, you know, basically I was thinking that I want to be in it as long as it holds the eight-day, and, you know, get, I guess I got out a little early, so we'll see. But then on the flip side, look at the TLTs. Bang! That got absolutely crushed. High, lower high. It's been hugging the 21 days. So if you trade technically, here was your spot to get out. And if you were looking for a short, that was your spot to short. This wedge broke to the downside. Different. Held the 8 day the entire time. You had a buy panic top. Came in, held the 21 day, lower high, breakdown. Technicals. You could even trade TLTs and bonds using technicals. And that's what we try and teach you. So anyway, Make a long story short, a lot of new flows came in. Um, you know, uh, there was definitely a lot of shorts caught. Um, we're in this little void of, uh, of, of this area in the S&P that now it seems like there's some more room. And it's hard to be long, but it's, I think it's just as hard to be short, at least right here. I think above 1990, 
you know, another day or so, I'll probably flip and start cost averaging into a short for a trade. And that means the oscillator will probably be like plus 85 to plus 95. It went out of plus 75, which is definitely overbought. But again, you know, I, I like price definitely trumps that to me. And, and a lot of these charts aren't up four or five days in a row. They just consolidated. They, they just cleared a spot and they can continue if they want. So you don't have to be all in long, but I don't think you should be all in short either at this spot. You know, and I do think that, you know, we should get some kind of follow through in some of those names I showed you before. And we'll see what happens and we'll go over it in the morning call. Have a good night.